I'm going to start with a quick overview of some of the major tools you're going to need. A 21 millimeter socket and locking lug remover if you need it. 30 millimeter socket. It's an unusual one. It's for getting the nut off that holds the hub on. And then a torque wrench set to 129 foot-pounds. That's for tightening back that nut after you're done the job. You'll need a few other ancillary tools, hammer, screwdriver, pliers, stuff like that, but nothing too uh, hard to get a hold of. Those are the oddballs there. This video here is only going to be the rear passenger side brakes that we're doing here. The driver side, my GoPro decided that it wanted to flash red but not actually record any of the footage. So I don't have any footage of the driver side, so you won't be seeing that. So this will just be the rear passenger. Taking the tire off is a pretty simple step. If you're comfortable with doing that, you should be able to do this brake job. If you're not comfortable with getting the tire off, maybe this brake job's not for you. After the tire's off, you're going to take this dust cap off here. This is going to get you to the nut that holds the drum onto the spindle. And the brakes are underneath that drum. It's important that when you take this nut off, you don't want to take it off with an impact wrench. You don't want to use a power tool. Do it by hand and do it slow. It's a special kind of nut that has resistance in it. So doing it by hand and doing it slow is the, uh, the, the recommended way for removing this. And once that nut's off, the drum just slides right off. Give it a little spin, give it a little pull, and that'll do it. This car is a 14. I know uh, some of the years before and after it are similar, but if your brakes do not look like this, this is not the video for you. I found it easiest to pull the springs on the bottom first and then work my way up. Used a pair of vice grips to get a hold of them and get them pulled out. But uh, whatever method you're going to use, if you find something that's better, let me know in the comments. I'm always looking for a better way to do stuff. Not a real good way to show this, but that's loosening up the adjuster there. It slides in and back. It's kind of really hard to show, but then that makes this a little easier to get that shoe on the right hand side off. Once that shoe's pulled away, kind of twist it around like that, and that spring drops out. It's the only way to get that spring out. You can push and pull on it all day, but you gotta pull that shoe away and kind of rotate it to get the spring out. This little spring here that holds the uh, adjuster to the last shoe there, that's the last spring that you're going to have to pull. After that spring is removed, the adjuster just uh, comes out just like that. That lever arm and a little bit of spring and cable there that's attached to that last shoe, that is your emergency brake lever and emergency brake cable. So there's a C-clip holding that shoe to the emergency brake lever. I'm trying to undo that C-clip and then once that's done, the last old shoe is out and then we're going to clean up, grease and reassemble. I've seen a couple different ways of lubricating these spots. I like to use antifreeze. 
I don't really have a good reason for it. It's just what I like to use. So some folks will use like uh, red high temp grease or anything like that. All of it seems to work just fine, just as so long as it's something that's going to allow those shoes to move just a little bit in there as they uh, compress out towards the drum and then back in. You just don't want them rubbing metal to metal without a little bit of lubricant in between. I mean, if you're the kind of person that likes to uh, kind of read a kind of walk through on how to do something like this, there's a website out there called Mirage Forum where they've got a lot of good written walkthroughs of how to do the back brakes, and that had a tremendous amount of information for how to do this. So that would be more helpful to you if you need to get some more information. It's a good resource if you got one of these cars. These shoes aren't specific front to back or left to right. They're uh, universal in that respect. So as long as you got the top at the top, doesn't really uh, matter much besides that. So you're gonna wanna reassemble pretty much the opposite uh, procedure, how it came apart. You know, work on this little C-clip there, get the emergency brake hook backed up. And if you hear all that humming in the background, that's cicadas, because it's uh, summer of 2021, and those things are everywhere and making a ton of noise, so it's mind-numbingly loud. Can't block that out, so that's what we get to listen to. At this step in the process, once you've got that adjuster in there, you're going to want to reset that like I did earlier. Stick a screwdriver in there and then push that section to the right all the way back. I unfortunately did not catch that with the camera when I did it right here. So if you're watching this video and you've gotten to this point, you're getting something useful and maybe you've seen a couple of these videos and you're liking them and getting something helpful out of them, consider uh, throwing a like my way or maybe even a subscription. I'd greatly appreciate it. Now once you've got your shoes on to this point, see how I can't pull that away from the backer plate. I had to pull it away a little bit. You want to make sure those tabs that are on the shoes are locked into those clips in there. That's a pretty important part that I screwed up the first time I was doing these brakes. So hopefully I can help you not make the mistake I did. I want to make sure those clips are keeping you from being able to pull those shoes away from the backer plate. This spring here is the hardest part of the entire process. Once you've got that one back on, it's a smooth sailing. It's really hard to get a good grip on it and pull it all the way over. Once you get that done, it's uh, you've passed the hardest part. Now I'll drop a card in the video here about how to change out those uh, shocks that you're looking at right there, in case you were interested in doing that yourself. Isn't that a most adorable pair of baby vice grips you've ever seen? So while you're in there disassembling everything, cleaning everything up, you're putting dust everywhere. And you want to make sure that spindle before you put the drum back on is dust and dirt free. That uh, you do not want a dirty spindle when you put that drum back on. So now you got that drum back on, you're gonna take that big goofy looking nut that you took off before and Start putting that on, and again, you do not want to run this on with power tool. You want to put it on the way you took it off, by hand, slowly and carefully. It's very, for some reason, it's very important you don't use a power tool to put this back on. So 
So here we are, once the dust cap goes back on, this job is done. I'd love to show you guys the other side, but I cannot because my camera decided to screw up somehow. So I'm going to say uh, thanks for watching and, uh, and I hope you have a good one. Take care.